The president of ZAPU, a long-time rival of Zimbabwe's ruling ZANU-PF, Dumiso Dabengwa, believes the current military action cannot be described as a coup. He says the possibility that First Lady Grace Mugabe could have been appointed as the country's vice president justifies the army's takeover. The military apparently wants Robert Mugabe to step down as president and for an interim government to be installed until elections can be held. Dabengwa says the army is trying to save Zimbabwe from a calamity. SABC foreign editor Sophie Mugwena spoke to him earlier and started by asking him about his role in the liberation struggle in Zimbabwe. I was instrumental in the formation of Zipra, which later was uh, an ally who carried out joint operations with the MK of South Africa, of the ANC. Sinabo Comrade OR, Sinabo Comrade Joe Modise, or Chris Hani, Omar Fuso. Those were colleagues that we interacted with in order to work out the program of uh, setting up an alliance between our two organizations. I was also instrumental who participated in the integration of the forces, the three forces, the Rhodesian forces, Zanda and Zipra in order to form the current the Zimbabwe National Army. Who envisaged an army that would uh, be able to protect the sovereignty of the country in the first place. And secondly, an army that would live up to the aspirations of the people of Zimbabwe during the liberation struggle. It did up to a certain stage, but unfortunately got itself entangled with the ruling party at a later stage. And uh, has been that misdirected up to now. Where did we go wrong? As a country, as a country, I think in the first place we went wrong right from the beginning uh, when we were supposed to come in as a patriotic front of Zapo and Zano and fight the elections together as one entity. But uh, colleagues in Zanu, led by Mugabe, decided they would stand on their own at the elections. I don't know, I can't say up to this day with accuracy exactly why they decided to do that at the last minute. Left Zapu with a few hours to decide as to whether they would also then stand as a patriotic front up in those elections. This is where we lost it. So that false start meant a lot as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I think it had influences from the powers that uh, broke at our independence then, the British and the Americans in particular, the apartheid regime in South Africa, were interested to see a government that would fall under a party that would ensure that 
there would be no interference. Or rather, that would guarantee that there would be no assistance given to the MK comrades. How will you describe the current situation in Zimbabwe? I did say, more or less a week ago, that the current situation in Zimbabwe left a lot of room for a chaotic situation to blow up in Zimbabwe. That the population was angry and they felt, almost everybody felt that there was not going to be any end to their suffering in spite of the sacrifices that they made during the liberation struggle. My observations were it is a matter of time before that situation blows up. On the other hand, I also observed that the army was in a desperate situation. They no longer got the support that they thought they were due to from government. Badly kitted and badly fed. And they say the combination of these two elements from the population of Zimbabwe itself that feels that uh, its sufferings would not be ameliorated in any way. And the army, I think the army decided to take. And then there was the threat, of course, of, uh, <coughs> there was the threat and an attempt which they thought was being done to impose uh, the first lady to be the successor to the president if he retired or his health failed. Both the population, yes, because she had already been uh, nominated by all the ZANO PF provinces to be uh, the vice president to take over from Nangagwa, who had then been fired. And uh, if she did, she would automatically be the vice president in government as well. And what it meant, the next thing was, if the president's health gave in, she would automatically take over as the acting president until such a time when elections were held. Do you think what the army has done in the country is good and uh, what needs to happen? Because some people are saying currently there's a vacuum. Yes, we have a vacuum in the country and that has got to be resolved by the Zimbabweans. I'm sure that there will be room for Zimbabweans to get on with it and be able to sit down and resolve it. But people should not be impatient. So much has been happening and people have been suffering. Let those who initiated this step do it properly. So far, in my view, they've handled the issues very well. They are dealing with the elements who they allege were around the president, misleading him, and were involved in corrupt activities, etc. Let them complete that task. The people, the bulk of the population is a tenerate. Don't want him any, any, any more. 
and if he had to stand for an election tomorrow, he would lose it completely. There's no turning point. There's no turning point. It would be futile for him to try and stand for an election. Your message to the international community, the Zimbabweans, the region, and the continent? Well, my message is Zimbabweans should continue to be patient, leave the army to go its program, and make the necessary consultations with the political parties that it think it needs to consult with in Zimbabwe. And let the Zimbabweans put their heads together and decide how they think the problem or the situation be resolved. And they'll decide. As far as I'm concerned, the rest of the world should just wait and see how Zimbabweans are going to solve that problem. No need to hurry. No need to be impatient about it at all.